I can say without a shadow of a doubt that the Soviet Union was very interested in UFOs. It would not be surprising if saucers had crashed in the Soviet Union. This is so far the best footage that of an alleged uh, crash UFO or a, a dead alien that I've seen so far. Fact one. For over five decades, Western governments have been collecting information on UFOs in strict secrecy. Fact two. So did their counterparts behind the Iron Curtain. Fact three. Now that the Cold War is over, the truth is finally out. The notion that life from another world may have visited our own is an intriguing one. Many say that it is true and that documentation exists to prove it, but that that proof has been kept hidden from the public for over 50 years. With the end of the Cold War has come some intriguing, if not surprising, revelations. Western governments apparently have not been the only ones gathering information on UFOs in brutal secrecy. Hello, I'm Roger Moore. Join us now as we embark on an amazing journey of discovery, of international intrigue and possible interplanetary visitation. Join us as we search for the secret of the century. of Russia is overwhelming, even to those accustomed to the wide open spaces of America. Huge tracts of eastern Russia are still uninhabited, and it was in just such a region, remote and far from civilization, that something profound happened nearly a century ago. In the desolate Tunguska region of central Siberia in 1908, something fell from the sky and exploded on the side of a hill. This event triggered an enduring mystery that scientists are still unable to adequately explain. There have been other well-known cases of UFO phenomena, but it was the Roswell incident that changed the way that government officials thought about UFOs. Researcher Paul Stonehill has done extensive work chronicling UFO sightings in the former Soviet Union. I would say that the most serious research was uh, given the impetus by Stalin in the 1940s when he found out about Roswell. It was then that the KGB and the military separately had initiated studies of UFOs. The KGB, as far as we know, had never ceased studying them. This Soviet Air Force footage was obtained by a group of Russian ufologists. It was declassified by the USSR's Ministry of Defense just before Boris Yeltsin took power. What we are looking at is a view from the cockpit camera of a MiG-23 flogger, scrambled to intercept two unknown targets. What we see now is an apparent merging of the two targets. Here is the same shot slowed down. These are obviously not typical flight characteristics of NATO, or any other conventional aircraft. The MiG lost visual contact with this object or objects, and there has never been any official identification. By attending international conferences and exchanging information over the internet, researchers on both sides of the former Iron Curtain have been able to increase the global understanding of anomalous phenomena. Richard Haynes has been to Russia many times, and has worked with many of that country's researchers. Soon after the f uh, perestroika, the fall of communism, 
approximately 1990, uh, I said to myself, uh, I, am, I think this is the right time to initiate uh, opening doors with the East, with people uh, on the Eastern Bloc who are sitting on their own piles of data that we don't know about. It. Likewise, we're sitting on piles of data that they don't know about. And so I started corresponding with friends, and we formed this joint USA-CIS Aerial Phenomena Federation. And we're now serving uh, a, a very positive role, which is information exchange. The next clip was shot from a MiG-25 Foxbat. And what we're about to see is actually an American F-16 Falcon about 200 meters away. What happens next is that a new object appears from behind the clouds. It was not identified. The new object suddenly descends and disappears into the clouds. Once again, here is the American plane at the same altitude as the main. And now here is the object as it appears behind the F-16. And here it emerges from behind. F-16, then goes down and enters the cloud bank. As with all accounts or potential evidence of UFO encounters, researchers attempt to authenticate and verify related facts as much as possible. In general, the more spectacular the report, the more important the verification. I was intelligence officer for the Soviet military for over 30 years. My son is a pilot in the Russian Air Force now. I can say for certain that there were numerous occasions where Air Force and Navy fighter planes intercepted what we thought were NATO aircraft, only to find that they were not airplanes as we know them and not belonging to any nation on Earth. It's no secret we would send planes into their airspace. They would fly into our airspace. It's like a game, like a test constantly trying to Test the response of the other side. And sometimes, someone would get shot at. In this case, neither the Soviets nor the Americans seem to have any clue as to what this third object is. I'm telling you, even when you blow it up, it's impossible to identify. It appears to be about four or five meters across. It moves with characteristics unlike any conventional plane. Now, in this final piece of footage, we will once again be looking at a cockpit camera view, this time from a MiG-21. The camera plane and three others were scrambled to intercept an unknown craft flying at very high speed, which is visible here as a large, cylindrical-shaped object. And as the Russian planes close in, the UFO suddenly picks up speed and disappears. Here it is once again. You'll notice the cylinder seems to be traveling at about the same speed as the MiGs until about here. And then it seems to increase its speed, which, according to pilots, must have reached at least Mach 3 in about 10 seconds. A lot of this footage was declassified after the Soviet military failed to identify the object seen here. This one shows an interception attempt by MiG pilots. There were many cylindrical object interceptions that were reported and investigated. We were interested in the high speed potential of this object. The size of this one is estimated to be about twice the size of a MiG-21. With technology available to us and the Americans, it should not be able to move as fast as it does. Hey, this footage is still interesting because I don't think the Russians had any idea what they were dealing with here. Their fighters were at least as good as ours, and yet here is something that is completely beyond their capability to intercept. The acceleration rate of this thing is impossible for any aircraft that we know of. There was one tragic incident I know of occurring in the early 1970s, in which MiG-21s tried to shoot down an unknown craft flying over Western Russia airspace, which failed to respond to Soviet pilots. The pilots used standard intercept procedure to expel foreign planes out of Soviet airspace. When the craft did not respond, the pilots were ordered to lock on missiles. At that point, both jets were destroyed by some weapon not known to Soviet military. Both pilots perished. There was an effort within the Air Force to make it look as if the fighter planes collided. But investigators I knew personally at the time said it was not collision. They were shut down by something. 
The NSA intercepted a radio transmission that we were copied on. Apparently, the Russians lost a couple of MiG 21s or 23s. They were trying to intercept something unidentified. All I know is it wasn't one of ours. You know, our department received a number of stories like this involving the Soviet military and UFOs. One of the most intriguing stories we came across was first told in the new book, UFOs in the USSR, by Russian author Vinyamin Grigoryevich Vereshagin. He recounts the crash of an extraterrestrial craft and subsequent recovery by Soviet officials in the late 60s. Существует свидетельство тому, что осенью 1968 года there is evidence to the fact that in the fall of 1968, there were reportedly a lot of UFO sightings in the area of Sverdlovsk, currently known as Ekaterinburg. 